Hi everyone, my name is Jamie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos about knitting and yarn and I'm recently getting back into crochet, so maybe a bit of crochet content, really anything fiber arts related. So if that's interesting to you, feel free to check out my other videos and subscribe if you like what you see. I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, threads kind of, um, which are all at jamie underscore creates. So feel free to check out what I'm doing over there as well. Today's video is going to be kind of different, but I'm hoping potentially like a start to a new series that I've randomly thought of and isn't completely and utterly my own idea, but I'm hoping to kind of take this idea that has definitely already been done and kind of expand on it and I'll explain that in a second. So in this video I'm going to be setting myself a little bit of a challenge to see how much can I knit in one hour. Today's project is the current, I think it's the only knit project I'm currently working on. I only have two whips at the moment which is really strange and one of them is a crochet project. But this is camisole number nine which is the new pattern from My Favorite Things Knitwear and it's coming along well I did get a lot done when I first started it because I was away for the weekend with my family it was a couple of weeks ago uh, since coming back I definitely have slowed down a little bit and also this is on three millimeter needles with fingering weight yarn so it's definitely not a super fast project and especially considering I've been knitting a lot with bulky weight and super bulky weight yarns recently. Uh, this is a big change for me. I did recently finish a pair of socks, so it's not like I haven't been knitting on small needles, but a project of this size um, on such small needles. It's been a while since I've done that and I'm enjoying it, but I was curious. I thought this would be a good project to try this challenge on because obviously using such small needles, I'm just really curious to know how much I actually can get done in an hour. Like what does one hour of knitting look like on this project? And in terms of the series that I mentioned, I thought it would be cool to make more videos like this when I'm working on projects with either like different needle sizes or different yarn weights. I think it really depends. But yeah, this is obviously like a small yarn and small needle project, but sometimes I'm working on projects with 15 millimeter needles. Sometimes I'm working on projects with eight millimeter needles it really depends and I am not necessarily super biased towards one type of project. I actually generally like to have projects going on with different weight yarns like and I usually I like that to be quite different. At the moment I'm like I said I don't have a lot of whips and the crochet project I'm working on also is using a three millimeter hook so my hands actually have been getting a bit sore and that's why I usually like to have projects with that have very different size needles if that makes sense because then the the movements that my hands are making is quite different and it means that I'll probably get less hand pain and I can continue to knit more often and have to take maybe less breaks because I am not going to be doing the same tiny little motion um, for too long or like big motions for um, bigger projects if that makes sense but what I thought it would be cool to show is the difference of how much you can get done in an hour depending on the yarn that you're using or the needles that you're using. I will also say I'm knitting this project English style because I was able to match gauge easier with English style and I also just like especially when I'm working on smaller on like on finer projects I just like how my tension looks better with English style and if it's just stock and net stitch it's pretty uh, manageable for me, even though I am definitely a primarily continental style knitter. That being said, that definitely does slow me down. I think if I was to do this continental and like time it for an hour, I'm sure I'd probably get more done than doing an English style, but I've definitely gotten faster with English style. And once I get into a groove of things, it's definitely not the slowest. Like I've seen people knitting slower than me, which is really weird because I am really not a frequent English style knitter. So I don't know, I guess I've just gotten good at doing it a little bit faster but definitely not nearly as fast as I do continental which just makes sense because it's a completely different movement and isn't as easy to do uh, as quickly which is fine. Obviously it's different for every person so for me this is just like how much can I knit in an hour on three millimeter needles and then the next time it will be how much can I knit in an hour on whatever millimeter needles you know what I'm saying? It's not a generalization of every single knitter. If you knit yourself I'm sure you're aware Every knitter is unique, every knitter's speed is different, but I think it will be cool to see and qu quite insightful for myself as well because I really don't often time things like unless I'm 
being paid by the hour essentially, which is pretty rare. I won't time it. So people always ask me, and I'm sure people ask you this as well if you also knit or crochet, how long does it take you to knit something? And it's like, that is such a broad question. Like, what is that? What, what, what am I making? Like, am I making a full jumper using three millimeter needles? That's gonna take longer than this. Or is it a jumper like this one, like a chunky jumper, that's gonna take a lot quicker. So it's, um, it's actually really not such a black and white thing, which is why I normally just say, too long and then people get the idea that knitting isn't a quick thing and our labor should definitely be appreciated especially when it comes to selling garments people ask me this question when I do markets literally all the time so that being said I have my timer behind me I'm not really sure exactly like how much talking I'm gonna do throughout this hour I'll try like check in here or there and yeah chat for a little bit but I also I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen to a podcast because there's no way I can sit here in silence for an hour I hope this is like somewhat enjoyable for you <laughs> and interesting and I think this is a great video if you want to just knit along um, hopefully it'll be kind of relaxing <laughs> so what I've done is I have put a little stitch marker where I'm currently up to. At this point in time, I'll just show you the project. I'm going to be just knitting in the round, uh, straight stock and net stitch. I've still got a while before I actually have to change anything. That's the underarm here. So this is all I've done. And the pattern said to do it for like 20 something centimeters, but I'm definitely gonna make this more cropped than it is in the actual pattern, but that's fine because it's worked from the top down. So I'll just, I'll just do less rows, but I am just still definitely nowhere near um, that point yet. Like this is the underarm. So when I say cropped, I don't mean, um, I don't mean a bra, but yeah, where's the back there, the front. So I'm not entirely, this is like kind of unrelated, but I'm not entirely sure like how this project is going. I have tried it on and I think it's going to be fine. It's obviously really hard to tell because I haven't done the neck trim or the sleeve trims. And I think that makes a big difference to the overall fit of the garment. It's also negative ease and it hasn't been blocked. So all those things considered, um, I think it will grow and will and it will fit based on kind of what it was looking like when I tried it on. But yeah, uh, it's definitely interesting. And I actually really wanted to knit the neck trim and sleeve trims before doing the stockinette stitch below, just so that I could get a better idea of what it was gonna look like when I tried it on before I continue knitting. But the neck trim and sleeve trims call for two millimeter needles, which I didn't have. And turns out none of the yarn stores in Melbourne do either. So I had to order them online, but hopefully they'll come soon. And once they arrive, I think I will put the stockinette stitch on hold and work on the neck trim and sleeve trims. But that is totally unrelated. But yeah, just, just a little bit about this project. The yarn that I'm using is from Woolen Works and it's her sock yarn and in the shade Ice. Okay, we're gonna start the timer. Three, two, one. Okay, we're off. I think I also forgot to mention that I've placed a stitch marker where I'm starting from so that once I finish the one hour, I can show you how much I've done. <laughs> I hope that was obvious. I feel like I might've gone on a tangent and I didn't actually say that, but that's what the stitch mark is for. So that's just to mark where we started so we can see, but yeah, I have a feeling it's not gonna be very much to be honest, but who knows? Maybe I'll be surprised. I reckon I'm anticipating at least five rows if I'm like just knitting for an hour and I'm not doing anything else. I'm also not gonna try and like knit faster than I normally do. I'm just gonna try and go at like my normal kind of steady pace that I can like maintain for an hour. Right, I'm going to hit play on my podcast. just occurred to me and I swear to god this happened in every single video I remember to say this like at a random point in the video rather than in the intro but if you were wondering uh what I am wearing it is the Miss Ziggy jumper which is a pattern I released last year and it is a great winter pattern obviously it's a super chunky and extra extra textured knit with a really fun chevron stitch um 
And this is actually knitted in the Stitch and Story chunky wool, which if you didn't know, and if you were familiar with Stitch and Story, um, they actually went out of business a couple of months ago, which was really sad um, to see uh, a, you know, a female owned small business, unfortunately go under. It's It happened and especially after COVID um, and just with the, the current, you know, economic situation in the world it doesn't really come as a huge surprise but at the same time it's really sad but the good news is they have actually been acquired so if you were um, a fan of their yarns or interested in trying their yarns um, if you can go to their instagram page and they um, they've listed where you can currently get the yarns but i think that yeah very soon their website should be back open so i have a bunch of patterns that call for their yarns because last year they were kind of to send me a lot of yarn so I designed a bunch of patterns with them um, and yeah it's been a shame because I obviously like I have all these patterns and haven't been able to really like recommend the the recommended yarn because it's not been uh, available so now it actually is available again uh, and will be um, even more readily available from their website pretty soon. I really love this pattern and I actually made a vest version as well, which is going to be in my book. Um, but the jumper version is obviously available on my website. If you want to get started on some winter knitting, if you're not currently <laughs> in winter like I am, but yeah, just thought I'd mention that because I literally always forget, even though I make an effort to wear one of my own patterns in every video, but then I always forget to say what it is. So I'll get better, I promise. Okay, I am almost about to be approaching the stitch marker that I initially placed. So it's not the beginning of round, but it's the stitch marker that I placed from wherever I was up to when I started this. So it has been about six minutes, I think. And I have done just about one round. So I think I will be getting more than five rounds done during this hour, which is really good news for me. Cause I was like, I mean, at least five, but I don't really know. So yeah, I guess we'll find out exactly how many. I could probably do the maths if I really wanted to, but I'm not sure if my pace is going to stay the same for the rest of the hour. So I guess once I figure out how many rounds I've done, we can do the maths and work out the average time that it would have taken me to do each round. But yeah, my hands also are a little, little bit sore because I was crocheting a lot yesterday. And even though this is a different movement, I think just in general, my hands are just a little bit tired from that. So I also may have to slow down at some point um, just to make sure that I'm keeping my hands safe. And also, of course, I'll be taking short little breaks to stretch um, every now and then. So very important to do that uh, because knitting for an hour with no breaks is actually not a good thing. keeping an eye on the timer but we have officially passed 15 minutes a little bit over now and I have done I don't know maybe three rows two or three rows I'll check back properly once I get to the uh the stitch marker but yeah 15 minutes in and a couple of rows in I did drop my yarn at one point so I didn't stop the timer so 
that might have set me back a little bit, but that's okay. So I think I've done three rounds, I'm pretty sure, in 20 minutes. So I should be able to get to five, which is what I thought I would do in an hour, but maybe I actually won't be able to do that much more than that because I'm not the great best at maths, but if I've done three rounds in 20 minutes, then it means I should get to about nine rounds in an hour if I keep up this pace. So yeah, it's more than five. just about hit the halfway mark and I am honestly shocked because it feels like it's been 10 minutes <laughs> not 30 so I guess this probably explains why I can spend so many hours if I really wanted to and don't have that much else to do uh, knitting because it goes really quickly like the time is literally blown by because I thought maybe I was gonna find this video a little bit tedious to film but I mean, I'm really halfway through and having a great time. <laughs> Twenty minutes left. I think I have one, two, three, four, five. I think this is my sixth row. So not entirely sure if I'll make it to nine rows, like I like I anticipated. But we have passed the five rows, so I've officially done more than what I thought was potentially possible. But I think I was guessing pretty low, just because I didn't want to guess something higher and then not. <laughs> not achieve that so I guess something that was pretty likely but yeah it's actually quite nice being able to kind of like track how much I've done because normally I'm just going and going and going and I don't really know where I even started so it's kind of nice every time I reach not just the beginning of the round marker but like I reach the marker that I initially placed to mark where I started I can kind of see more tangibly how much I've done in this time so yeah it's pretty cool minutes left um i'm listening to a podcast and they're talking about the barbie movie so i thought maybe this would be a good opportunity for me to talk about it because hopefully by the time this video comes out a lot of you will have uh potentially seen it already so i saw the movie on sunday night i was actually only meant to see it this coming weekend um i am still seeing it this weekend i had the great idea to host a Barbie like party for like a couple of my friends, like literally like three people. <laughs> and 
to have like before seeing the movie like we all wear pink and I'm gonna like figure out a pink dinner of sorts and like pink cupcakes and pink drinks and gonna get pink decorations and just like play the soundtrack and have a great pink time before seeing the movie so that was like my plan and the reason that we were going to do it this weekend um was because one of my friends was away last weekend uh and this weekend just worked out better for me to like host something but then like the weekend last weekend rolls around and I was like seeing everyone like seeing it and knowing it was out and knowing that it was going to be probably spoilers all over my like TikTok and Instagram and Twitter and I was just like oh my god like the FOMO is just so real I feel like the build-up for this movie has been so intense and it was like really fun when none of us had seen it so it was like we could all collectively be excited but once it was out and I hadn't seen it and I was thinking about having to go through a whole week of that I was like I literally can't I cannot do it and my boyfriend um who initially didn't actually show much interest in the movie all of a sudden once it became uh once it became clear to him that there was a lot of hype around it which apparently took a while <laughs> then he wanted to see it so I was like you know what I'm gonna see it twice <laughs> and it's gonna be fine so I saw it on Sunday and I'm honestly so excited to see it again so no regrets and like none of my friends that I'm seeing it with have seen it so it'll still be their first time which will be really exciting but yeah I loved it like I loved that movie I don't know um about you guys but I just I was having a great time I was having such a great time obviously the color palette was just so up my alley like if you literally look at my Instagram feed you'll see that like everything I knit is basically just like the color palette of this movie so of course it was super inspiring and just like visually pleasing and also just really was like it was very uh my inner child just like appreciated it a lot and obviously like the music was great the acting was brilliant the storyline was amazing the message I felt was really important and so 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 well done um I honestly have like no notes like especially I think once I've seen it twice I feel like I'll be able to form like a much more um kind of like consolidated opinion just because I feel like I was so caught up in like the excitement of seeing it that like some things were hard to take in um especially in the second half because I feel like the first half of the movie like obviously I hadn't seen it all but like it felt like a lot of what was in it was in the trailer and in other clips that I had seen um that like had come out for promotion and stuff and so I felt like the second half for me was like where I was like oh okay like this is like the plot that like I haven't been aware of obviously because they're not going to give away the whole thing so I feel like yeah I was really just like taking everything in but it was quite hard because it was just so much going on and it was like still just like so funny but yeah I'm really excited to see it again and like really kind of I guess kind of process what the the message of the film was and and hopefully kind of pick up more more things uh because I think watching something a second time you're always going to pick up more than you did the first time same time same thing as like when you listen to a song for the first time and you don't really take in any of the lyrics but then you listen to it a bunch of times and then one time you'll listen to it and you'll all of a sudden understand what the song's about so not that I didn't understand the movie at all but I I, I did but um I just think yeah seeing it a second time will be will be really good uh and it's I, I honestly I, I was like at first I was like oh you know it's like seeing it a week later is it too soon I walked out of that theater and I was like I could see it again tomorrow like a week is too long <laughs> so yeah it's now Wednesday I saw it on Sunday I'm seeing it again this Sunday I am like can Sunday just be can be can Sunday be tomorrow already like come on so yeah I I absolutely loved it I thought Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling were both brilliant just so 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 good I am obsessed with Margot Robbie. Um, I also love that there were three um, actors from Sex Education all in the movie. That was like one of the first things that I picked up on when the cast was announced. I was like, sorry, Maeve, Eric, Adam, what are you all doing here? Um, and also it was hilarious to see them all speak in American accents just because I'm so used to hearing them all, obviously as they're all British, speak in their British accents like they're doing um, sex education they were all great and it was so fun there was a point in time where um Emma Mackey and I can't remember the name of the actor but the Eric from sex education where they had like a few scenes where they were together and I think there was one scene where all three of them together and I was just like this is so wholesome and also like the part with Emma Mackey and um or with Maeve and Eric 
uh, there was no way that was an accident. Like in my opinion, like that was just, there's just no way that it wasn't on purpose. So I love those little kind of Easter eggs for those of us who watch Sex Education. And yeah, there was probably so much more I can say, but um, of course I don't want to like spoil anything, but yeah, if you've seen the movie, comment what you thought of it because I loved it so much. And now I just need to plan my outfit for when I see it with my friends because obviously we're all gonna wear pink. I did wear pink uh, last time, but I think this time I'll probably go a little bit more uh, all out because I'll be with my friends and um, yeah. So I need to figure out, I have so many pink knits. I have to figure out which one I'm gonna wear. I am almost there. I only have six more minutes. So we're definitely getting close to the end of this hour. So I'm just gonna put my podcast back on until I get to the end. It just occurred to me because I have pink Barbie nails right now and I feel like this is kind of like the blue that's on the Barbie poster so I feel like my whip and nail combo right now is giving Barbie semi-intentional for the nails unintentional for the color that I chose for this tank regardless I still think it's iconic, but a funny coincidence, I guess. I only have two minutes left and I am very close to hitting the initial stitch marker that I placed. I'm probably gonna pass it in this next two minutes, but I wanna stay true to the challenge and keep knitting up until, I don't know if the time is gonna go off or if I'm just gonna have to check when the timer stops. I'm not sure if it's gonna make a sound. I kind of hope it doesn't because it might scare me. <laughs> But yeah, we've just passed the marker now. So we will see exactly how far I get in the next minute and 20 seconds. Less than a minute left. I think I'm just gonna keep glancing at the clock just in case it doesn't make a sound. 20 seconds, 10 seconds. Okay, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one. Oh, okay, it did make a sound. Okay. Right, let us see how much we've done. Just let me give my hands a bit of stretch again. Okay, so let's count. Firstly, I'll show you. So this pink marker here is the stitch marker that I placed at the very start of the hour. And this is how much, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Obviously it's kind of a bit bunched up on my needles, but you can kind of see how big this project is. It's definitely bigger than it looks because of the, um, the smaller cord that I have. But yeah, this is how many rows I've done. And let's count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh my gosh. So I did, just over nine rows, which is exactly what I predicted. That is how much I got done. I am pretty proud of it. I mean, I guess nine rows, it doesn't look like a lot. I guess this is really small needles. So hopefully this was insightful for you. If you aren't a knitter or if you aren't a frequent small needle knitter, then I guess this is a good uh, indication of more or less how long it would take if I was doing not, if I was not knitting in the round, I think it would definitely be less because I'm definitely slower when it comes to purling stitches. So this is like stock net in the round. I'm very keen to do this again on a different project and compare the two. I'm gonna measure how much I actually did. So I did about two and a half centimeters, which let me just count, see how many inches that is. Yeah, that's about an inch. So I did about an inch slash two and a half centimeters in one hour. 
I just like went to go check and my storage was full. Thank God, pretty much the entire video was filmed. I didn't lose much footage, just basically my outro. So hopefully this was interesting for you. Please let me know if you are interested in seeing more videos like this, if you're interested in seeing a series where I show different weights and maybe with crochet as well. And yeah, comment below any other video ideas you may have because I am all ears and I don't think I'm gonna be doing a knitting podcast next week because I don't think I have enough projects to show you. So yeah, I'm really open to other content ideas that you might have and I'm really enjoying getting back into YouTube. Make sure to please check out my patterns as well. I think I didn't say that at the start, but I have um, all my pattern links are in the description for all the platforms I sell on. I sell on my website, on Etsy, on Ravelry and on Ribbler. And I'm really looking forward to hopefully getting started on some more designs um, to come out in the second half of the year because I haven't been able to release really many patterns at all. I've only released one pattern this year because I've been working so hard on the book, but now that that's done, I will have more time and I'm starting to get a few ideas for some new designs, which I'm really excited about. So yeah, I'd really appreciate your support if you're interested in knitting any of my patterns. Oh my God, my phone ran out of storage again. Sorry, the end of this video is so chaotic. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.